While the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface is perfect for those needing two microphone or line-in inputs, sometimes you're just going solo. If you're looking for a high-quality, portable, easy-to-use USB audio interface, then the Focusrite iTrack Solo might just be for you. This video is brought to you by Neosync, our partner in affordable web and game server hosting. With instant WordPress installation and quick domain transfers, Minecraft and Counter-Strike Go servers for cheap, they'll get your project up and running in no time at all. Click the screen to learn more. The Focusrite iTrack Solo is a USB, RCA, and iPad compatible doll, similar to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that I reviewed previously. The iTrack Solo features a nice premium feeling metal case similar to the Scarlett 2i2, four rubber non-slip feet on the bottom, one XLR input, one line in input, 48 volt phantom power for the XLR input as long as you have it hooked up to USB power either to your computer or to an external power source if you're using it with the iPad. It features two gain knobs for your different inputs, a monitor knob for both your audio playback and your headphone monitoring a direct monitor on off switch so you can either monitor your inputs or monitor your playback as a DAC from your computer, headphone monitoring out port, USB 2.0 A to B cable out, iPad device link out for those mixing their music on their iPad, two red and white RCA style line out outputs and a Kensington lock. Again, for when security is key. The main target audience for this device seems to be those who are wanting to record and mix music on their iPad while on the go. While this is kind of a handy feature, it's not something I would ever use, and I don't even own an iPad, so I can't exactly test that feature. What I was able to test, however, is its audio recording and playback. What I originally bought this for was a small closet voiceover booth that I set up for my freelance voiceover work. I had this, a laptop, and my Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone. Hooked up the AT2020 to the XLR input, turned on the phantom power, hooked it up by a USB to my laptop, hooked up a pair of headphones, and I was good to go. Even on a laptop, which obviously it should do fine on, but it recorded just fine, high quality recordings, very little background noise, especially with the amount of sound foam that I put up, and it was exactly what I needed. And it's perfect for that. If you just have a microphone or a microphone and line in input that you need hooked up, just one and hooked up to your computer and something easy to use, this works great. The sheer ease of use for recording from this device, as well as the high quality audio, is what convinced me to purchase the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 for my main setup, which I reviewed previously. It was literally plug and play, record, and you have very high quality, clean audio signals. I've battled with background noise, electrical circuit noise, hissing, etc. from many, many mixers and interfaces, so I was extremely happy to have finally found one that provided a much higher quality audio output. Just for giggles, I also hooked up my Casio piano keyboard up to the line in input just to see how recording music sounded. And while obviously I can't play anything too elegant, I was kind of blown away at how high quality the recording was. I'd hooked up my keyboard by USB, it has a USB interface. I hooked it up to line into my old mixers and it always counted, sounded kind of so-so. And here it sounded very beautiful. Like I wouldn't have honestly guessed that it was an actual recording versus, you know, a recreation and software from this. It was, it was pretty cool. Audio playback to use this as a DAC was pretty straightforward, just like the Scarlett 2i2. Hook it up by USB and set it as your default device and audio would play back through it. However, keep in mind, unlike the Scarlett 2i2, it does not have a separate playback volume knob. And so if you have the monitoring set to a certain point and you play it back, the audio will be quite loud and your risk hurting your ears. You have to control your playback audio by your actual computer's audio levels. So you have to turn down the volume in your computer to turn it down to your headphones. The, this can be quite frustrating, but it's not a big deal once you get used to it. There, there is a reason that there's volume control on your computer, even though 90% of the time it's always going to be at 100%. This is something you're going to want to use that for. But it's simply because it's smaller than the 2i2 and frankly there's not room for that kind of knob. I have a couple less positive things to say about this device, although not that many. The headphone jack for the 1 4 inch adapter feels very loose. Again, just like with the previous one, it does not cause any audio feedback or glitches or static or even noise when it's moving around, but it is still quite loose, whereas the line in feels completely tight and unmoving. I'm not sure why the same style jack feels different in different places, but it does. 
again, not a big deal, but it makes me a bit uncomfortable thinking that if I would be pulling around on the cable a lot, I might cause some damage inside the device. However, treat your device responsibly and you should be okay. I would much have preferred standard line out like on the other one with the 1 4 inch line out on the back of the device rather than the RCA style connections. However, the target audience for this device is again those wanting to mess with music and live mixing and things like that. So RCA is more appropriate for that audience and I understand that. Personally, I would have preferred line out. Also, I would like to have an audio playback knob. I'm not I realize like I, I can't pick out a spot where I think it could be fit. However, it's still something that I feel is necessary, so I'm not sure how to balance that, I guess. Maybe if it were strictly a one input where you didn't have the line in input, then you could have a playback volume knob on there, but to each its own. However, perhaps when you switch off direct monitoring, have the monitor level knob function as the playback knob as well. This wouldn't affect any, you know, this wouldn't be useful if you had direct monitoring on, so for most people it probably wouldn't be useful. For those, but for those who strictly want to use it as a DAC, having the, the knob actually control volume would be infinitely more useful. I did experience some driver issues with this device when I first had it installed on the laptop. Whenever the laptop would fall asleep, the driver would totally flip out, and until I unplugged it and plugged it back in, it would play back really, really slow and warped and record at like super speed and a lot of really strange things. However, that's actually really common with external DACs and DAWs, so shouldn't be news to anybody per se but it's something to watch out for simply either don't have your recording software open when your computer falls asleep or just unplug it plug it back in and you're good to go overall the Focusrite iTrack Solo is an incredible awesome and affordable one to two input audio recording device that's going to provide you with high quality clean recordings whether you want to do a podcast YouTube videos or if you're looking to live mix music on your iPad for whatever reason, since that seems to be its target audience. Like I said, it is pretty cheap, so if you're looking for a cheap interface solution instead of looking to those giant expensive mixer boards that honestly don't do a great job, this is something that I would highly recommend. Thank you so much for watching my review of the Focusrite iTrack Solo USB audio recording interface and iPad compatible mixer device. Again, still don't get that. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. Leave a comment. If your feelings go beyond that, check the description for links to ways you can support us by a monthly contribution with Patreon, supporting our sponsors, things like that. And otherwise, guys, my name has been Adam, and I will catch you in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. I have a couple less positives to